Hey guys, how's it going? This is Davin with Davin D Doodles and thank you so much for joining me on the day after Christmas. I am currently in my ugly Christmas sweater that I bought at Walmart for $10 and it is the most comfortable thing in the world so it might not be going anywhere anytime soon. That said, I hope you've had a great holiday even given the current new normal. I hope that you were able to at least reach out to family and that you were able to have a nice calm holiday however you celebrate it and just relax and hopefully you got a little bit of coloring done. So this video is going to be a little bit different. I am actually going to be doing a year-end review. This is the last coloring video that will be on the channel for 2020. And so I wanted to show you the things that I was coloring throughout the year and my six favorite art pieces that I made separately. It was something that was going around Instagram and Facebook for a while of picking out your favorite art that you've done. So I just wanted to throw that in at the very last bit as well since some of you are actually curious about what I do when I'm not coloring. So for anyone interested, that will be after the coloring images since I know that's why most of you are here. So that said, we are going to go ahead and dive in. But first, I want you to make sure you have your drink of choice. This time of year, I will make an exception. You can have your coffee, you can have your tea, or you can even have hot chocolate. Either of the three are perfectly acceptable drinks to have while you watch this video. So that said, let's also keep in mind that it is a time of year that we are supposed to be luring out 2020 with the promise of milk and cookies, kicking it out the door, and then locking the door behind it. It is going to be a much better 2021. Let us hope, let us pray, let us do whatever to appease the forces that are out there, that we have a much better year, and let's close it off in the best way possible. Oh, and, and, by the way, I haven't forgotten that it's also coming up on the time that we're supposed to make our New Year's resolutions. You don't get to know mine until the very end, but you should also be thinking about what yours is going to be because I want to know what your current idea is for a New Year's resolution and how you plan to keep it. It could be art related, coloring related, or just how to be a better human being in general. Let's think about that and post our comments down below and try to hold each other accountable for the new year. I feel like that was a really big mouthful, and now I'm kind of tired. Is it normal to be tired after talking that much? I don't know, but here we go. So, the very first book I bought is the one I'm going to start with. It is Lost Ocean by Johanna Basford, and I didn't do much coloring in it. I started off with the first page. I used... I don't even know what I used. I'm pretty sure it was just the Fabric Castell watermarkers. And you'll notice I'm very OCD. Every fish that is the same type is the same color. If I was in charge of the world, it would be a very boring place and very uniform. And you can see that on this next page as well. And I apologize if it's a little far away, but I've got some stuff coming up that might be a bit bigger. You can't really see the shimmery because I used some metallic gel pens here too. And this page is also the same. Try to get some of that glow on here. So anything that is the same shape or like a cross, it's the same color, but that's how it worked for me and that's how I felt relaxed doing it, so that's what I did. Now where I really got creative in this book was for Shark Week. I was looking through and I realized that this coloring page existed for Shark Week and I was like, oh, I'm gonna do it. So I actually watercolored the background so the ocean was inside the sharks. I colored the sharks different colors of coral and it got all shimmery, which I think is lost because I had to spray paint the back it with like a matte finish. Because um, otherwise this is paint and this is pencil so it was just transferring to the other side. So I had to spray paint it and I lost some of the shimmer and the details. But I did draw in the jellyfish and the bubbles and they're probably some of my favorite parts. Um, the shark is cool looking, don't get me wrong. but. I really like my jellyfish too, it was a nice little touch. Though looking back on it, maybe I'll do this other side with these other sharks next year and do it like a different color on the background than black. So that was all in that book. It was nice and short. This also only has one page done so far, but it is a relatively new book and it is something that was in a color and chat. You probably recognize it if you watch my channel. Um, but it is nice and simple. I, I bought this because I wanted this particular book to look like a Nicktoon, like just color vomited everywhere. So I was pretty successful in achieving that, I think. And it was just fun to do while I talked to you guys. And this was actually on the 4th. So there was that. I also have the Monster Doodle Invasion. And this is the same idea as like the Nicktoon just color explosion. 
I just wanted to do flat coloring, something easy, something nice and simple for color and chat sometimes when I'm feeling stressed out. And you could kind of see that came through here, especially even though my marker was running out over here. Um, it's not all perfect, but that's okay. So this is just a nice, simple, like, the only thing I tried to do here was keep the colors relatively separate from each other so it didn't all blend into one hot mess. But this was a lot of fun to do. I really like coloring in this, these, these two books. These are fun. They're cute. I don't care if they're for kids. I may be 32 years old, but I love it, so. Um, this is one of my, I realized very quickly, this is one of my favorite illustrators, Tatiana Bogema Stalova. However you say it, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, but her stuff is gorgeous. I love it and it's so fun. Like when you do feel like doing details, it's just nice to go away from people and to do something simpler. I, I love it. I can't get enough of her stuff. Um, especially lately, I've been really kind of on a kick and you'll see that when I do kind of like my December review. I'm gonna zoom you out, sorry. When I do my December review, it's basically nothing but her book. So I colored this in as well. I tried to make it kind of like a turn up with some, you know, vegetables. And this is where I really started catching myself trying to stick to limited colors. So instead of throwing in a bunch of blues and stuff, I just tried to use the purples and various shades of yellow in different areas and carry that color palette through. Which I don't know if that actually makes sense, but that's what I've been doing, and I really like it. It's kind of challenging sometimes, but it's fun. This is one of my favorite of the year. I love how this one came out. This was so relaxing to do. I don't even think it was a video. I think it was literally just me needing to de-stress and take a nap. And since that's what this little guy was doing, I just, I wanted to try fall colors and it pulled itself together. I felt so much better after doing it. I uh, can't get it up there. There we go. So I even tried to kind of light him up a little bit. You can see that I did like the rim lighting. I, I really put some time into this one and I fell in love. So I think that's all I did in this book. Um, I also have her Halloween book and I did one or two in here as well. This one I did for, uh, it was actually on Halloween. And I did it because he was Freddy Krueger and I just loved that to death. And I tried to make the pumpkin a different color and look more like a gourd and not a pumpkin and do something with the lights. So they were all like, you know, Halloween colored and tinted. And I thought this was just kind of fun. The biggest issue I have with her book is actually trying to, um, sorry, I'm trying to get it up there, is trying to color the mice in so they don't all look alike. And that may sound weird, but I do have trouble with that. Um, but, you know, whatever. Sometimes it's okay to have mice that look the same color. I've noticed the Ohuhu markers I use are actually really good for that too. So this is a page that had a ton of detail, but I loved it. And I colored this on September 26th. So it was actually done before. But it's another instance where I just kind of like, this one it was a color explosion. I just let myself go and have fun. And the little witch with the pink and the purple just looks so cute. Okay, sorry about that. I had to turn it off for a second and kind of compose myself. I was like, I had too much coffee so my hands were all shaky for a second. So I needed to compose myself and get myself together because we're going into the book that I loved at first and then I started to hate. This is Jade Summer's Intricate Mandalas. And at first I was like, oh yeah, this book is great. It's so relaxing, I love it. I even did shimmery stuff. Like, you you can't see it, can you? <laughs> I don't think you can. Maybe, there we go, that's a little bit of shimmer. So I used some shimmery stuff and I tried to have like a good time with it and I was doing it every day for a little bit and I just kind of, you know, used different mediums. And then I realized the patterns were actually extremely repetitive and like there was a lot of flowers and I started stressing out because I didn't want every page to look the same and I didn't know where to start with the color picking out and I didn't want to do it anymore so I didn't. After so long I just kind of gave up and stopped doing this book. I'll probably come back to it. It was relaxing when I let myself have fun with it and not overthink it. 
but sometimes like just the task of picking out colors for someone like me it's extremely hard so I would just stress myself out about it and that's not what coloring is about it's it's not about stressing out it's about enjoying a hobby and relaxing especially because the rest of life is you know distracting and stressful enough I didn't need to worry about you know this book too so I stopped doing this book for a while and moved on to other things that did not make me cringe quite as bad when I looked at them. So that was all I did in Intricate Mandalas. Then I got Cute Witches for Halloween and I only did two pages in the book. I don't know why I do this because I did that with um, the, the nice little town book too but I had this one and this one it's okay it's not the best it's not my favorite but it's not bad I mean it could be worse. So I have like a nice little Slytherin girl because, you know, of course she's Slytherin, even though she has a raven. Could have been Ravenclaw, I guess. But she was surrounded by bones, so it made more sense at the time. This is one of my favorites, though. I really like how this little witch came out. She is so cute, and she has such a cool backstory. And this is actually a video, so if you guys are interested in how I colored her and the backstory that's associated with her, go check out the video for this. If I can figure out how to, I think I might actually link it down below because I'm so proud of how she came out. I think she was even featured on like Jade Summer's picture of the day or something on Instagram. I don't know. But I love how she came out and I love the little story I came up for with her and it's just like she's one of my top favorites. That um, other one of the mouse napping, this one, and there's one more that I absolutely adore. So we're actually getting into that book. Um, this one has a, a few pictures done in it. Some were at the very beginning when I was learning and some were just kind of like, whatever. This is the first picture I ever colored and it was in colored pencil. And I regret it every day because I'm not patient enough for colored pencils, especially when I was first starting out. But it's a learning experience. So it was definitely one of those moments where I was realizing that I was a going to need to learn how to separate my colors because <laughs> we have blue flowers here and then a blue sky but um I did like some of the details that I added in and she wasn't the worst color job in the world for beginning color pencil so that was her and this is a really good one in my opinion she is not my favorite but I do like how she came out a lot I like the little glowing effect I got on her butterflies and I like the detail in the background that I put on her I also like that I let myself have some gel pen fun and just kind of go with it um I was especially proud that I was able to save the lighting on her face we all know shading with Jade Summer is a pain in the butt I was able to save the lighting on her face after I changed my mind how it would be lit halfway through the image so I started coloring it one way and then changed my mind and still managed to get something that wasn't too terrible. You can't really see it, but there's like a bunch of purple in the uh, staff and there's black glitter on her eyelashes. This is probably the other favorite that I was mentioning. Oh, nope, this isn't it. <laughs> this is also a video. I was trying to just kind of relax and do some fun stuff. I like how her wings came out and making it look more like an insect. But that's probably the only thing that I really like about this picture. Um, I don't know why I made her blonde either. Like, I feel like there's a lot of blondes out there in uh, coloring book pages, especially with fairy related things. So I don't know, maybe I need to venture away and be more curious with my colors. But I do like the lighting effects that I got for like the little ball star thingies down here. Um, are you the really good one? this is my favorite <laughs> and it's such a simple image it just kind of kills me but i love the detail in her wings that might be hard to see on camera i'm not sure but i love 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 her hair i have started coloring all my redheads this way and it's like my favorite thing to do now is to color hair this way so i am so proud of her and how she came out because I wasn't sure how to do a redhead because obviously red hair is not just red and this this right here is a really good color combination so I'm gonna carry that through for some of my own artwork too that's coming up I've got a little redheaded character that um, I'm dying to color and you'll see that trick in there too 
So this was something I did for Halloween. It was actually, I just saw the picture and I saw the dead rat thingy and I was like, Pikachu. And so I turned this into like a fandom of a vampire dressed up as Ash Ketchum with a bunch of Pokemon references and even a Poison Ivy from Batman reference. I don't know, maybe she's just a big comic nerd or like an anime nerd, I don't know. But this is her. And I kind of felt like maybe I should have done something with the walls, but I passed it off as like maybe she lives in an apartment or something, I don't know. But she's got some ugly purple carpet. <laughs> I will say that, that is some ugly carpet. But we've all lived in a place like where we've had like nasty carpet, so. This was something I actually colored for a challenge. Oh, I don't remember what it was called though. Um, but I did do this for a challenge and a lot of people like the fireside. I I think I just really prefer cooler colors, so I still love the blue side. But this was the image I chose because it was very symmetrical. It was easy to go down the middle and kind of do half and half. So that was this. And I'm trying to kind of keep everything in frame, so I'm sorry like a thousand times if it's just like moving around. It's me trying to fit the book under the camera so you can get a closer view. So I'm sorry. Now this is stuff you haven't seen before because this is stuff I colored in December. Um, I'm so excited. Actually, you may have seen one before, but that doesn't count. Uh, where does it start? <laughs> where did it start, Davin? Okay, so this is one of the first things I colored. I, I saw this and I just had to, like, who doesn't think of gingerbread? This honestly took a dark turn in my mind though. I saw the gingerbread house and the mice eating it. And the only thing going through my mind was that fairy tale. Um, Hansel and Gretel, like the witch's house. And I'm like, oh my God, is there some witch that's like waiting for them to go like eat until they can't move and go capture them or something? That's where my mind went. I, I don't know why, I, I should probably see somebody. <laughs> but yeah, this was really fun. I didn't do any like super special tactics. I've been doing some pretty straight coloring lately. Um, I do wish there's a paint that you can add on to things like this that it's really thick and it has like a gloss so it would look like snow but I'm happy with it the way it is. It is totally fine and it's really cute. So I had a lot of fun doing that actually. Um, the other one I did was this one here. Um, it is what it is. It, it, the, some days I kind of pushed myself to get it done just because I wanted to have a complete picture. I wanted the fireplace to look kind of like plaster and then for some reason I decided they were going to paint their walls. I figured they had eclectic taste since they really like mint green, pink, and yellow. I don't know. So that was kind of how this came out. And I was too lazy to go get my like skin tone markers to color the mouse. So she looks very, very dark brown with some rosy, rosy cheeks. But she was outside in the cold. She's going to have rosy cheeks. But I wish I had that fireplace. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, what else? What else? This is one that I did for like Christmas in July. This was in colored pencils. And the only thing I really feel like I was successful with in this one was the lights, like up around the top and the glowing effects. I'm really happy with that. Otherwise, I need to learn to press on my pencils to get more depth, but that's gonna come with time and it actually has gotten better. You guys haven't seen the work in progress yet for it, so. That's been on a hush hush like side project you don't see. Unless you're on my Instagram, then you've probably seen it, but. Um, so there's that. I also have this one. I'm gonna try and flip it here. This Anthony said reminded him of, uh, not Christmas, um, Halloween, because I decided to really push myself and make it super colorful. There was a neighbor that I used to live near in a place called Greensburg, in near Pittsburgh and they had like this totally eclectic house with crazy colors and like statues and stuff like on the house like they had a dragon head mounted that they had painted and made it was coming out of the windows and stuff so I kind of wanted to channel that and use some colors I never really used that much including like the oranges but Anthony said it gave it much more of a Halloween vibe instead of a Christmas vibe but you know what there's a Christmas tree and I don't know, maybe they just really like Halloween and they're one of those people that doesn't want to let Halloween go and they're just gonna have a Christmas tree up with their Halloween decorations. So I'm still happy with how it came out. I like the, the, the you know, the effect of the snow and everything. 
it was still fun to do even if it does look like it's halloween and then i decided i really just wanted to do the bonus pages because they were more simple um you guys may recognize this from a color and chat it started off with the mario vibes up top and then quickly went to where's waldo but it was fun to do it was more simple and it was just a nice way to relieve some stress that it had been building up so i'm actually finding myself drawn to more simple images like this if you guys know books that are a little bit more simple feel free to let me know in the comments below because i'm finding those much easier to do than even just regular images from something like this like this right now is really overwhelming to me whereas this is just simple and easy and fine um the last one i did was this guy i decided i was going to do him because he was cute and i didn't want to do red and white and stuff like that and like a super bright christmas tree i wanted to try and go more towards just like a wintry feel so i made him kind of like in dark blue i did silver and gold for the tree and then i gave him a nice base using the same colors because that's what i do is i just repeat the colors over and over and over but i like how he came out he was a lot of fun and i did try to kind of do some you know i don't know if you can see it there's like some gel pen in there for some glossy effect and i feel like it was fine without it to be honest but i like how the actual coloring itself came out so that was the last image that i colored in 2020 now i'm really excited with the progress i've made even though sometimes there's setbacks with stress and things like that we all go through phases with what we like to do what we want to do and i'm just kind of going through a transition right now where i'm not sure what i want but i have plenty of books to keep myself occupied and to keep coming out with some new videos for you guys because i love sharing this with you now with that said it's time to Go ahead and if you were only here for the coloring that is all i have for you unfortunately but if you're interested in seeing some art on the side as well i've got a few pictures picked out only six images that you can take a look to see where i have come from and where i am going with my own personal art so if you're interested i'm gonna pull those real quick and get right back to you okay so for this i have a few different things of different sizes pulled for you you're gonna get zoomed in and out a little bit but i'm gonna do my best to keep it simple and like is not nauseating as possible i'm gonna start with my earliest stuff and then you're going to see the progression and i'm gonna kind of explain why i chose what i did um, besides the fact that these are just my favorite images the first of my favorite images is this one here this is a character named Duncan and Pooja. He is a koi boy, a little mermaid boy that I made for Mermaid. And this is one of the first times, it was because I created him that I started really delving into um, basically just alcohol markers. I was always black and white, that was all I ever did. And when I started drawing him, I decided to try coloring. and this is one of my favorite it almost looks like a storybook image and i'm actually going to make it a goal that i can't discuss right this second because i said you would have to wait but this is one of my favorite images of the two of them it's not with showing their faces but it tells a story they're watching a shooting star they're having fun together in a pool they're just relaxing and you guys know how i love my relaxing images my relaxing coloring this is one of my favorites that I've done, especially with the two of them. This is where it all really began was in my mermaid journey. So that said, you're going to see some black and white work next. I'm going to have to probably zoom you out because it's a really, really big image. And this was hard for me to decide on um, because I have another image featuring this character that I prefer over this one. But this is the image I'm discussing this is jill and carlos it's probably a little hard to see this is jill this is carlos they're facing off against a zombie horde in raccoon city which some of you guys may or may not recognize as the resident evil series this is resident evil 3. it also has a video on my page um of my entire process of this of me kind of explaining how i stressed out the entire time because there's so many details and then i just go over it with a black marker anyway but I'm gonna zoom you in just a touch. 
this was the first time I really experimented with a setting of any kind. I put a ton of detail work into the characters themselves. I put a ton of detail work into the zombies in the back that are reaching forward. There's even a far off background of the police department, a parking garage, all kinds of stuff. And there's even a foreground that has the zombies kind of like facing away from them, like here, and they're reaching out at them. Like it was a very dynamic, very confusing. It pushed me to my limits and stressed me out so bad. But even though I like another image that I've done involving Resident Evil more, I like this one because this is where I started to grow as a as a artist, you know as an illustrator, whatever you want to call it, hobby artist, this is where I started to truly grow. I was pushing myself and trying new things. So this is also one of my favorites. Um, let's see, that was May. The other one, I'm trying to go in order here. So I started getting more stylistic choices here. Ooh, you guys got really, really blurry. I'm so sorry. So I started doing more stylistic choices and there was something called July Fi that I was a part of. And this is the image that I fell in love with the most. This is still one of my favorites where I was discussing in the other one that it was the, um, the scope and like the detail. I tried to include that here, but I also tried to include just characters more in my own style as well as lighting with shadows and like telling a little story and and just pulling an environment together cohesively with color because while Duncan and Pooja the first image was very simple it told a story this has much more going on you could tell it's a little kid's room he's got dirty dishes he's got laundry everywhere it's the middle of the night he's panicking you know it's it's got much more going on and it was much more successful with the markers than i think any other picture had been at this point this was the first time that i colored my, with my ohuhu markers and was so proud i would have showed it to anybody on the street this was a turning point for me and I still love this to this day and I still want to frame it even though it's attached to another image that I hate. I love this one. This is definitely, definitely one of my favorites. And this is where you will see a shift in style begin because the next one was only a few days later. The next one is also Resident Evil. That is not it, but this one is. This one is Resident Evil 3. This is the villain Birkin. This is nice little Leon Kennedy who I adore. His hair is a little dark but that was an accident with the markers you know drying differently than I anticipated. This is basically a battle going on. It was very dynamic compared to most things that I had done at this point. The lighting like the light coming through the grates and showing on the wall like the detail that I was managing to put into Birkin himself, who's very monstrous. Obviously he has a giant eyeball. I mean, come on, he's a monster. But the detail I was able to put into him while maintaining a scope of like style, I'm gonna zoom you in on the face a little bit. It, it just kind of blew me away. Like I, I still love this one. This is one of my favorites. So just the detail work that I was able to kind of get in and just the scope of the story. And of course my Ohuhu markers, like everybody knows they're my favorites. So this is by far my number five. No, four, this is only number four. But there's two more that I wanna show you. One of which is of course Resident Evil. If you guys can't tell, I love Resident Evil stuff. <clears throat> so this is in a much smaller sketchbook, but it's also markers. This was honestly a quick sketch. This was done maybe three months later. This took me less than a day to do, and it's much simpler, it's just a character sketch, but it's so true to the character. And the colors I chose were so cohesive and so suitable to her. I This is another one that I would frame if I could. I really, really would. This is Lisa, Lisa Trevor. She is in the basement of Resident Evil 1, and she will beat your butt. You run into her, you go the other way. That's all there is to it. I She is obviously like a zombie kind of figure, so I made her skin like this ashy blue. I gave her the like 
horrible medical gown green and then up here are faces that she so you know um creatively removes from her victims and wears on her face so i chose to do like different colored faces in the same kind of gray scheme so it would fit in with the rest of her just I love this one. I really, really do. And I cannot remember for the life of me if this was a video or not. And if it wasn't, it should have been. And shame on me because this is one of my favorites. The last one I'm going to show you, my number six, is this guy here. This was done about a month ago. And this is my original characters. This is again where you'll kind of see the stylized preference. I'm also working with my alcohol markers, the Ohuhu brand. This is just a little girl character. This is my robot Robin. I've put them in a scene together and kind of tried to create something cohesive where it all just kind of pulls together in a scene that would make sense. I've tried to kind of use the same colors over and over, like I keep saying, like that's, that's what I tend to do. And I did that here as well. You'll spot several of the same colors repeatedly, but that's, that's how I like to do it. And sometimes when you mix colors, you come up with something different and it's it's gorgeous. So this is my other favorite. It This is more of a personal one, I think, and it speaks a lot to me, but the fact that I was able to do this in about a day also, compared to when I was struggling to even finish a sketch in a day, it's just kind of like practice, practice, practice. This is a reminder to myself to keep going, keep practicing, and you can do whatever you want. I have also been practicing with my shadows, trying to work a lot with which direction the light is coming from, where it's gonna be more dark and shadowy versus highlighted, things like that. So that's something I was also trying to practice in this image, but just the image itself really spoke to me and is still, this is my number one. Going from number six all the way down to number one, this is it. So. You guys have seen everything I've colored this year. You've seen my top six uh, art attempts. And so now you're probably wondering, you've watched all this way, what could I possibly be plotting for my New Year's resolution? Well, there's two things, two goals that I really want for next year. I really, really want to make it a point to try and do more digital art. I have had an aversion to digital art since I was young. I've only ever wanted to do traditional, but I really think there's a place for digital art and I have the system, I have the computer perfect for it. I just need to sit down and learn and do it. So that is one thing. You guys that follow me on Instagram, you'll probably start seeing some of that stuff because I'm going to really push myself to try. That is my probably number one goal. My number two goal is more business related. With these guys here, um, I'm really going to make it my goal that by the end of next year, for at least the holiday season, I want to have a coloring book finished for these guys. Like with the little robot guy, maybe with a little girl, maybe with, for those of you that know Cal, he's probably gonna be in it as well. And just themes along this line, something a little different that's not, quite as cutesy and fantasy based so that you know it may be wider appeal and they're easy for me to draw and I love them so passion makes everything better that's my goal is to at least if it's not I don't believe it would be something published like you can purchase on Amazon necessarily but even if I have like an Etsy store or something like that where I can sell individual pages to anybody interested I think that would be a lot of fun and that's my goal I want to have at least 20 pages of good quality line art for you guys out there to enjoy and hopefully you know give me some feedback on it and share to finish pictures with because that would mean so much to me so those are my two goals for 2021 and hopefully i'm able to make them come true don't forget to let me know what your goals are and how you plan to obtain them because let's stay in this together let's make sure we get those goals because we make them for a reason they mean something to us now and we need to make sure they mean something to us in the new year as well i hope you guys do have a good start to the year to 2021 i hope you're able to finish 2020 strong and I hope that you guys keep an eye out for another video that may be on the horizon right before the new year. And keep an eye out for updates regarding 
the promised free page that I'm already beginning to come up with ideas for that I'm hoping to get out in January. So thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in 2021.